Byron Williams is back this week. Looks like he's good to go. And you're thinking about using him in your lineups this week for fantasy football because he's got a great matchup against the Arizona Cardinals. The thing is, he's coming back from injury. You don't know if he's going to be on a pitch count or not. We dug up some of the press conferences from Sean McVay. We're going to go over those, see whether or not there are any details in the pudding to see whether or not he'll be getting the full workload back or be on a pitch count. So we're going to go over those. And, of course, the news, the facts, the data, the advanced metrics to see how safe you feel about Kyron Williams. Before we do, what you need to do is click that subscribe button. Tap it with the finger on your phone. Click it with the mouse on your computer. We go over the coach speak on these players to help you read the tea leaves on these coaches. We also go over the waiver wire intensely every single week. We also help you set your lineups and everything else. Click that subscribe button. Stop missing out. Let's look into Kyron Williams this week. And the big thing is Rams officially designate Kyron Williams to return to practice day, and he is expected to play against the Arizona Cardinals. And that was huge. This came out a couple days ago, and a lot of people have a lot of questions about him. We talked about Kyron Williams extensively last year. In the same light as Keaton Mitchell this year, Williams didn't hit last year, but he hit initially this year. And these two players are similar in the fact that they were both late round or UDFA players who got a lot of buzz during training camp, who dealt with injuries during the start of their rookie season, who are in an offense where you can see them being injected into. They're used differently. They're totally different players. But with that preseason, that training camp buzz that we got from both of them, you're reading into that and the situation both these running backs are in, you could definitely see them hitting and that did for both of them pretty much but once he got reinstated this week back to practice a lot happened with Daryl Henderson he got cut and then he got back to the practice squad you do not make those moves unless you feel good about Kyron Williams you do not do that you put him in there you let him have a little pitch count you let him get a couple carries some snaps see what he's doing you keep Daryl Henderson just in case Nah, he's back on practice squad. You don't make that move unless you're feeling good. That's what that's telling me. That's what that's telling me right now. Cooper Cup back at Rams practice in limited capacity. What does that tell us? That means if Cup's out, which we don't know yet, they're going to be using Williams a little bit more in the passing game. I mean, he's going to be running routes regardless if he's getting a full workload. The likelihood of him getting the shorter targets and the short to intermediate parts of the passing game elevates if Cup is out. And if he's out or if he's working under a limited capacity, look for Kyron Williams to potentially get more workload in the passing game. But Kyron Williams, if you remember right, when he was healthy on the field, very productive. One of the top running backs in fantasy nonetheless 17 fantasy points off the rip in week one. Then 28 against San Francisco. Then 8.5 against Cincy. Of course, you're going to have a down game. 27 against the Colts. 7 against Philly. 21 against the Cardinals, who he's playing against this week. So as long as he's getting a full workload, as long as he's getting the touches, the upside's still immense. And we're going to go over that matchup later in the video, so stick along with me for that but going back to his stats looking at his production in a different light here a bunch of rb1 weeks here very efficient it's either rb1 or nothing and that makes sense with this offense because if you're not letting the running back roll when it's hot then you're throwing it to those wide receivers and you're pushing it downfield or the matchups tight or whatever the scenario is with the game script but if the game script allows it they're going to let him roll 17, 28, 27, 21 PPR fantasy points. That could be coming back to your lineup soon. The opportunities are grand here. We're hitting over 20 opportunities in a game on three instances here. 17, 17, and 15 in the other three. So very solid here, allowing him to be productive in fantasy football. We should see that going forward. And now we're going to listen to Sean McVay talk about him coming back, talk about him in practice, talk about what he's seeing and what he thinks about the usage for Kyron Williams coming back here. What about um, Kyron Williams could be 
practicing him today. Yes. So but before he's he looked like he was full speed in the walkthrough just now. So he's he's feeling good. He's excited to be back. We're we're glad to have him back. One thing to point out here that he seems pretty excited to have him back. If you look just a quarter of a second ago, almost a smile coming out of the edge of his mouth. If you're trying to read the tea leaves from his mannerisms, and he's pretty direct, eyes connected, and really not giving you much fluff. And he's got a okay hit rate when it comes to the news, and really it's about what is interpreted between that interview throughout the rest of the week. But still, good sign there. I mean, kind of, if, if he's coming off IR, I know he's ready, but do you kind of have to do anything to kind of ease him back in, or is it just so... You know, I think you want to be smart about it. You know, I think you want to be able to try to simulate some drills, you know, without the risk of injury, you know, to be able to just get him back to some of the things that, you know, are going to occur on Sunday. And, you know, you can't ever truly simulate those things, Gary, but it wasn't like it was too long ago. You certainly don't take anything for granted, but... Um, if he's feeling good, you know, we want him to be able to have a normal workload. And uh, I know he's excited to be back and uh, his teammates are excited to have him. Pretty much what he says, hey, we got him in practice. I like what I'm seeing here. However, I want to see a little bit more. I want to see him under a little bit more duress. I don't want to push him to a point where he can re-injure himself. But if it's looking good, if I feel good about him and he feels good about it, we're going back to old hat. We're going back to the touches. If everything feels good... We're going back to that. We're going back to the old pitch count. That's what he's saying here. And maybe that could be false. But that's kind of what he's saying here. He's going to be getting a decent clip of the work when they go back to him if he's feeling good. If he's not feeling as good, maybe we get a little bit more Royce Freeman. Maybe we get that regardless anyways. And this is just a little bit of coach speak. And this is him in front of the press conference. And you know what? We use Royce Freeman more on the goal line. We use him more on short yardage. I could definitely see that. I could definitely see that going forward. I'm not going to release that to the media right now because I don't have to. I don't have to give you too much news. I don't have to tell you how many touches and opportunities he's going to get. I can tell you that he can be involved in this offense. I can tell you he can be heavily involved in this offense. But I do not have to give you the full pie. That's one thing you have to think about this. I just have to answer this question, and really, I don't have to answer it. The fact that we got this much and this much certainty is a good feeling that he's going to get a decent size of the workload when he comes back if he's feeling good and healthy. So we got to pay attention to the news on that, pay attention to the clips from practice, the news reports, what we're seeing pregame, everything else, and this is probably going to be right up to kickoff. Pretty much on that. But we're feeling good. The news sounds good. It's good enough to really roll with. A lot of fantasy sites rankings, which we're going to go over later in the video, is looking good and prominent. They're feeling good on that. So the market's saying, hey, let's roll with Kyron Williams. Let's see what happens. That being said, going back to Kyron Williams is a fifth-round pick. The athleticism... Wasn't really there. We saw that at the Combine. We talked about that heavily at the Combine when we talked about those stats. We made fun of him for that. Fell in the draft, paid the price for that. But the thing about this, very good pass blocker. Very dependable. Very good catching balls out of the backfield. Just that running back that an NFL team loves to have. And last year, when I was talking him up, and if you were really paying attention, I was saying, hey, he could be that theoretic esque back who does not hit in these metrics, who does not hit in a lot of things. But considering how well he's used in the passing game with this team, he's going to do some things in fantasy, kind of like James White too. Kind of like in that realm. Not a comparison when you view the tape. Not that. But per fantasy purposes, per the macro, a macro comparison which is probably better than doing one-for-one -one comparisons anyways, just going over the macro, considering there's just so many variances from there on. But the macro here, good in the passing game, solid in the passing game, not hitting it athletically, but you're very dependable. You're running the correct routes. You're hitting the right holes. You're doing the correct steps with the correct timing in the backfield. All that stuff matters, and coaches love that. And prior to that, you had Cam Akers, and you did not like that. 
He was in the doghouse off and on. And then you get a back like this. It's kind of like a breath of fresh air for you. So Kyron Williams, they love this guy. And looking at the snaps and opportunities, he was getting 82% snap share. He was getting 63% of the rushing attempts, a 33% opportunity share. We're probably going to go back to something like that. But here's where I want to exercise caution a little bit. I think Royce Freeman is not going to be totally dead. And I think he's going to have those games where he crosses the goal line and gets some short yardage work. I think he's going to have that. And I think there might be some scenarios or some opportune times where he could be a little bit frustrating for a Kyron Williams fantasy manager. I really think that could happen. But the thing is, I think Kyron Williams is going to get a lot of snaps. I think they're going to use him a lot in the passing game. I think his workload, his opportunity share, going to push the 30s at least. He might get back to 33% or more. He might do that. I don't really have a true prediction on the percentage, but I can tell you it's going to be up there. And I can tell you Royce Freeman is going to be used to some capacity, and I don't think it's going to make him fancy relevant to the point you're confident. But I see him crossing the goal line maybe here and there. Maybe having some opportune times where, like in a matchup, he's left out there in a series or two. And when you look back at the touches, it's a head scratcher. But if you go back into the game, you look at the flow, it makes sense type of deal. But I look for Kyron Williams to get a large piece of the pie when he comes back. I look for him to be a guy you're starting, especially when you look at this week against the Arizona Cardinals. After that, you got Cleveland and Baltimore, so you're going to have to make some decisions there. But more than likely, you're starting him this late in the game with a lot of running backs injured, a lot of running backs in bye weeks, especially week 13. That's bye week city. We got Washington, New Orleans, tougher matchup there. You got New York, and then week 18, you're not in the fantasy playoffs anymore. Your season's probably over, should be. But looking at this week, because we go one week at a time, you got the Arizona Cardinals, and they are very, very soft on the running backs, allowing 26.8 fantasy points per game to running backs. They've allowed 15 total touchdowns. They allow running backs to work in the passing game. They allow running backs to run all over them. And Kyron Williams, before went off on them as well as he rushed for 158 yards and a touchdown, scored 21.8 PPR fantasy points, and they're allowing teams to run on them. Devin Singletary rushed for 100 yards. B. John Robinson got 95 yards, if you want to go back to that. Kenneth Walker, 105. Kyron Williams, 158. 106 to Christian McCaffrey. Tony Pollard, 122. So you can run on this team. And they're allowing guys to score fantasy points on them as well. Saquon Barkley, 27.2. We got Christian McCaffrey hung 48, almost 50 points on them. Joe Mixon got 13. You're looking here, Kyron Williams, 21 again. 13 points from Kenneth Walker. Most of his points came from rushing production. Almost 30 points for Gus Edwards, who went off a few weeks ago. 12 points for Jerome Ford. 17 for Bijan. 19.8 for Devin Singletary. So you're seeing these guys go off on them off and on throughout the season. And when running backs don't go off on them, it's when they excel so much in the passing game. I think the thing that could hurt Kyron Williams is if they get too far ahead on the Cardinals, which could potentially happen. Once you got Kyler Murray back, Kyler Murray could push the pace a little bit. So this is something to pay attention to. If Cooper Cup's out, they're going to use him more in a passing game. Matt Stafford's back. He's going to love having his outlet back. He's going to love having Kyron Williams back who he can depend on. He's going to get a lot of work if he's feeling good and healthy. Looking at the rankings in fantasy football, this is fantasy pros. They got him ranked as RB18 for the week. They are really putting the kids' gloves on this week. They're being very conservative. But also look at some of the other running backs in this range. David Montgomery, Isaiah Pacheco, Raheem Mostert. Joe Mixon, Ramondre Stevenson, James Conner. Up there in the mix with some of the top running backs, I see that Arizona matchup. And the only thing that bothers me is the touch share. And I feel like it's going to be looking good. And we'll know more going forward. It's Friday morning right now. We'll get more practice reports in the afternoon. We'll get more on Saturday. That's going to help you make your decision. 4 for 4, who is a very conservative site when it comes to rankings, has him at RB10. And I know what they're thinking here because I look at their process 
I look at their rankings every week when I'm helping you guys set your rankings. They love the matchup. They feel good about what they're hearing about him from Sean McVay. They have him ranked up there with the top guys. And they feel good about them. Point-wise, not too much off from Joe Mixon, who's the RB19. So that also says something when it comes to their projections as well. So think of that in that light. So you're RB10, but you're really not too far off from being the RB20, honestly. So honestly, they do not have them ranked super high, though the rankings have them up higher than some other running backs there. But the matchup here with Arizona is very, very good. And then we look at how he's being valued on DraftKings right now, and his value is pretty solid here at $6,600. The fact that you got the Arizona matchup, the fact that he's coming back, and if he gets that workload back, and say he only rushes for 80 yards and catches a few few balls, at that price point and the availability to stack the rest of your roster, and if you don't have the Thanksgiving games in there and Friday's game in there, and you're just doing the Sunday slate, that could be a huge advantage for you at that price point because you can get a decent running back in there and you can probably get another good running back in there at a fair price and stack the rest of your roster. So he's not a free square, but he's also a discounted running back that you can use in your lineup and really cash out with. I don't see many people diversifying from him. I can see people diversifying to him in tournaments, but still, this can allow you to get creative in some of your rosters but you need him because you already have him. But you're looking for that confirmation that he's going to play this week. I feel good that he is. And I feel good that he's going to get a decent amount of touches. I do not know how many. I do not know if there's going to be a pitch count. I do not know how involved Royce Freeman is going to be. But I feel like he's going to get goal line work. I feel like Royce Freeman is going to get the short yardage work. I feel like he is going to be getting some opportunities because he has earned it a little bit. You kind of want to use him there. You kind of want to soften things up and use him as a meat shield for Kyron Williams in those opportunities. But I feel like Kyron Williams is going to be used in the passing game enough where he's going to be valuable in fantasy, especially in PPR, because he's got that PPR upside, runs a lot of routes per game, catches a lot of balls, gets targets. And I feel like he's cup is out he's going to be getting those opportunities let me know what you think in the comments below i want to hear about it make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out rick flair's watching don't disappoint him you made it this far in the video anyways i kept you entertained i want to thank you for watching now catch you on the next one <laughs>